Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be looking at curves in Blender. And you can see here, I have this example, which got some cur a curve here that's floating. We're gonna be looking at how to make the curve, how to create an animate time. So just like um, animate it with each frame for every second it updates. And then we'll um, add some thickness to the curve. And we can even control the radius. And then I'll show you how to also take that curve and we'll create this little system where we can easily scatter a little icosphere on it. And we can increase the resolution and size if we want to, which is really, really cool. And then we'll look at these parameters, these two really powerful ones, the spline parameter, which allows us to kind of make our um, balls here appear along the parameter of the curve. Or we can look at this one over here, the endpoint selection, which can tell us how many, where it gives us kind of like the ability to add as many spheres as we want to either end of a curve. So maybe I only want one curve over here. I mean, one sphere here in the end, but um, on the end here, I want two spheres. So I can kind of come here and make it two or three or four or whatever I want. So this is a really sort of powerful little tutorial, just kind of introducing you to curves. Um, if you know absolutely nothing about geometry nodes, this might be a little bit trickier, um, but if you're still new to it, this should be pretty easy to follow. It's not complicated at all. And we'll kind of just look at how to set this up. So I hope you guys enjoy it learning about curves. Let's jump in and make it. So with a new scene open up in Blender, we're gonna go ahead and jump straight into our geometry nodes workspace by clicking up here on geometry nodes. And we'll just select our default cube in the scene. That'll be perfectly fine because we're gonna swap it out inside of the network anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and click on a new here and let's just call this curves since that's what we're gonna be learning about. And let's start to have a look at it. So let's go over here in the node network area. Let's go shift A, let's go search. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna type in curve and then line, so curve line. Let's select that. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug the curve into the geometry output. So now we no longer have the cube here, which is the group input, but we actually have the curve line over here. So if you tab into edit mode up here in the viewport, you can see you still have the cube, but that doesn't matter now. It's not registering in this network. We're just now seeing this in our object view. So what we have here is a typical curve in Blender. So the reason it is the way it is, is because it has these um, vectors here. So the start vector is zero, zero, zero. That's why our curve is starting right here in the middle of the world. And then over here at the top, it's starting one meter above on the Z. So it's these two points that define the line over here. So if I actually move these around, the line itself, the, the actual curve moves around. So it's a very low resolution curve. In fact, it's as low as you can go for a curve. It just has two points in 3D space that you can move around on the different axes, but you can see here. So that's how a curve works. So that's cool, but it doesn't really help us because we want to actually, you know, bend this curve and do things to it. So there's a very cool node in Blender and that's called the resample curve. So we're going to go shift A, we're going to go search and type in resample. And we're going to get the resample curve, place it on this cable. And now it takes the two, the line, um, the curve line here, that's only made out of two points and it actually resamples it into 10 points. Now you can actually change this to anything. It could be 120 points. It can be five points, right? For now, let's just make it 30 points for now. And to be able to see that this is actually made out of points, let's go ahead and let's move up a little bit. And this is the fun bit. We're gonna go shift A, we're gonna go search and get a set position. So type in set position and select it, place it over here. And then a really cool thing we can do is we can take this offset and that can, we can offset all of these different points in 3D space. And a really cool way to do that is to drag on the offset itself, let go. And when the search box comes up, just type in noise and get the noise texture here. Instead of going for the factor, let's just go for the noise texture color. Okay, so you can plug the color into here or it should already be automatically in if you dragged. And now you can see our curve is actually deformed. And if we change the scale here, we can change the way that looks, okay? So for now, let's just make the scale something like two, but you can see it's all shifted over. And the reason is, is because it's working from a value of zero through to one. So it's kind of meeting um, in the middle. So we can actually subtract half of that. So on all four vectors, we're gonna go shift A, search, all, all three of those um, vectors. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go and type in vector math, and we're gonna vector math. 
place it on this cable and let's just go subtract and then let's subtract. So I'm just gonna click and drag and drag of these and type in 0.5. Now that'll bring it back to the center here. It kind of adjusts for that sort of offset we get because of the um, gray scale that the noise texture here uses. So what we can do then to control the strength here is we can just grab this subtract, shift D to duplicate, place it up on the cable. And then let's change this from subtract to scale. And now we also have a way of adjusting the scale on our noise. There we go. So what we'll do, we'll maybe give it a scale like that for now. We'll come here to our scale, maybe like make it one. You can do whatever you want, but that just kind of gives you an idea of what we have here. We have a nice curve. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do something really interesting, okay? We'll actually grab all of these nodes that we just created, like this, we're gonna just grab them. Okay, they're all active, except the group output and grab group input. We don't want them selected, but just these guys. And then we're gonna go Control G or Command G, and it's gonna turn them into a node group. So if you wanna go back out, just hit Tab to go back out. And now you can see we have this node group, right? So let's just grab this node. Let's just press N to bring up our properties. Let's go to our nodes option here. Let's just go to the label and let's call this under the label curve maker. And now you can see our node here is called curve maker. And if you want some parameters to play with, what we can do, you could just select this curve maker node. You can actually press tab to go back into the network. And then with this group output here inside this little package, we can actually take things, for example, Let's take the scale from our noise texture and drag it into this input here. And then let's take the scale here from the scale vector and let's plug that into here. So you can see we have two scales so far. And so we can control how many points our curve are made out of. Let's just grab the resample curve, drag that count and drag it into here as well. And then, so later on, we can actually control or animate this noise texture. Let's just change it from, 40, from 3D to 40. So we have time as a fourth dimension. And then let's just take this W value and let's drag it into here as well. So what I'm gonna quickly do is I'm just gonna to go to the group. I'm gonna quickly go down to group sockets and let's just double click on this count and we'll actually call it point count because that's the amount of points that make up our curve or you can also call it curve res resolution. You can call it all sorts of things. And let's just double click on this W and let's just call that a N I M for animation. And then we'll leave those two scales as they are. So what we're gonna do now, let's just hit tab to go back out. And now we have this nice little curve maker that we can always come back and reuse. So we have all these cool um, parameters now. For example, we can take the scale here. Let's make it like 4.2. And let's just go to the second scale, which is um, that vector scale. And maybe let's make that something like 7.2. Okay, and now that's looking really cool, but we want some resolution. So now we can go ahead and maybe let's give it something like 130 points. And now it smooths out our curve nicely. How cool is that? So now what we can do, we can actually play around with this animation value over time. So let's make a little um, node setup that can, that can drive this animation for us. So what we'll do is we'll actually drag on this animation input. We're gonna drag on it and let go. And let's type in scene. And let's get a scene time seconds. And then let's go shift a search and get a math node, math node and click on math node and then place it on this cable. And then let's change this to multiply. Okay, so let's have a look, let's just scroll up. And then once you see multiply, just click on it. And now that we've added in this math multiply, we can now multiply the scene time with whatever value we put in here. So right now it's really fast. So I can make this something like 0.01 and now we have a nice slow movement, or I can just make it 0 0.05. And I think that's kind of a nice speed. So we'll kind of go with 0 0.05 for now. What we'll do, we'll just grab these two nodes here and we'll just go control G and then turn them into a little group. And inside of this group here, let's just take this value, plug it into this group input. And then now under the group, let's just come here to that value and call it animation speed. There we go. And then let's just tab back out. And now we have this cool thing here that drives the animation. And what we can do, we can select this node, go over to the node option here, and let's just call it animation. In fact, let's be more specific. Let's just um, call it animate. And let's just put in brackets scene time. So we know what's driving it, it's the scene time, there we go. 
So now we have this cool little node and the cool thing is you can save this node and every time you want to redo this, you don't have to do that all over again. You just have these nice little nodes that can you can plug together to do all of these sort of effects for you real quick. So now we've generated a curve here. We have a way of animating it and even controlling the speed of the animation. So you can make it nice and slow if you want to. Okay, it's really, really cool. But now what we want to do, we want to add some thickness to our curve. So let's make a setup for that. So after the curve maker, let's come here and go shift A, search and get a and get a curve to and click on curve to mesh, place it on this cable. And now what we can do, we can take this profile curve here and we can sweep it across that input curve. So let's drag on this and type in curve circle. Now let's get a curve circle. And now let's just bring this radius way down. And now you can see it's sweeping this curve circle along this um, curve here. And now we've got some thickness to it. So what we can do here is also just take this resolution and maybe make it something like 20 instead. Okay. And now let's just grab these two nodes and let's just go control G and then let's just take the resolution and the radius and plug them both into here. And then let's just tab back out and let's just go to our node here. And let's just call this node curve to mesh. And now it's just our curve to mesh node that's a little bit more refined. There is already a curve to mesh node, but this one just kind of gives us the circle and it's all neatly packaged. Now we can come here at any time and just adjust the radius and even the resolution of this curve here like that. So it's really, really powerful. Okay. So now we have that. So let's just move this guy up. And now what we want to do is the fun bit. We actually want to put some objects along this curve and that's really easy to do. So we're going to create a system for that. So let's just take this curve maker. Let's just drag here from the curve. We're going to drag this geometry from the curve and we're going to bypass the curve to mesh because we only kind of want the data from the curve here. And we're going to let go and let's just type in instances on points and get an instances on points. And now it's going to take each one of the points, these points here, the ones we have, the, the point count, it's going to take each one of these 130 points and it's going to instance an object on each one of those. So if we go here and, um, whoops, make sure this goes into the points and the instance points, that's it. So the geometry goes into the points on the instance points. Then we drag here on the instances and let go. And let's type in ICO and get an icosphere. There we go. And if you now go Z, you go wireframe. You're not going to see anything because we actually need to join this to the system. But for now, what we will do is we'll just take this instances and just drag it into the group output for now. Okay, you can see we have all of these spheres, these icospheres, but we just need to come here to the icosphere radius and just bring them way down for now. And let's just up to resolution. So now you can see we have a 130 of these spheres over here like that. But what we want to do is we don't necessarily want that many spheres here. So we could come in here and bring down the resolution of this curve, but it's not really what we want to do. So what we can actually do that's much better is before this instance is on points, we can go shift a search and get a resample and we can resample that curve as it's coming in here. And now we have a way of controlling the amount of points in here like so while we can still maintain our curve over here with the resolution that we want, which is 130. So let's join these two together. I'm going to go shift a search and get a join and get a join geometry. Place it on this cable over here. And then let's take the curve to mesh and plug it in the top here. And now these two are combined. So if we come here to our curve to mesh, we can just bring down the radius a little bit for now. So you can see there and we can see all of our spheres on top of there. So now, okay, even if we increase this point count, so let's just maybe make it like 200. So we've got a nice smooth curve. It doesn't have to affect because it is resample we now have a way of controlling how many spheres we want. So if I only want, you know, 20 spheres, icospheres, I can just add that in like so. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bump up the subdivision to four over here. And I'm also going to just come over here and go shift eight, search and get a set shade smooth and place it next to the um, instances on points just so it makes it look smooth in the viewport. And then I'm just going to grab these four nodes that we just created. I'm going to go control G to turn them into a group and inside this group, let's just quickly take things here. So let's just take the um, resample curve, plug it into the socket. Let's just go to the group and let's go down here to that count. We just created double click and let's call that curve resample. There we go. So we know what it is. 
Let's just take the radius of our icosphere, plug it in here. Let's just double click over here and call it ball radius. And let's just also take this, um, the subdivision, plug it into the bottom socket here. And let's just call this ball resolution. So we can control that as well. And let's just also just grab this selection over here. And this is gonna help us later to de determine where we wanna place these spheres along here. So let's just take the instances on points. Let's take that selection, plug it into here. And let's just double click on that selection. Let's just call it where, um, selection. And then in brackets, we'll just call it where spheres go. Okay, so we know what it is. So now we have all these inputs. Let's just tab back out. And now we have this cool little node, which will also come here to our nodes. And let's just call it balls on curve. So now we have this cool little node that we've created, this custom little node, which means we can take any curve we want, drag it into this curve input. And now we have a way of generating how many balls we want. So if I want 50 balls, I can type it in here. I can control the resolution of each one of these balls. Uh, I mean the radius, and I can come here and control the resolution. So I can up the resolution to make them smoother and whatnot. So you can see it's really, really powerful. Okay, so now we have a very cool setup here because we've got these nodes here now that are, you know, taking a curve over here. It's animating a curve. It's adding thickness to the curve in a way that we can control anytime we want over here. And it's also scattering these balls. And that's really, really cool. So now you can scatter any object you want onto there, not just balls, but you can get the idea here. But what if we wanted more control? What if we actually wanted to add the balls only in certain places? And maybe like at the end. And that's also really, really simple. So since we've created this selection right now where um, the spheres go, we can actually now drag on that selection and we can type in spline parameter and get the spline parameter factor like so. And you can see one of the balls has now disappeared in the end. In fact, what we can do is we can go shift A, search and get a ramp and get a color ramp and place it on this cable. And then let's switch these two values around like so. And now if I drag this black value down, you can see our balls are kind of disappearing towards the end like that. And now we have a really cool way of sliding this over here, as you can see, and I'll just move this up. And we have now this really kind of powerful system where we can slide this and we can make our curves go from one end to the other like that. We can control where they go using the spline parameter. We can also switch these around. So if I kind of want it coming from the other side and now they kind of disappear off over to the other end like that. So you can kind of see how powerful this is. Now there's another node we could use. We can go shift A, search and get a, or maybe let's just go shift A and then just go down to the curves and under the read, let's just go end point selection. And now if we drag this endpoint selection into where the selection goes here on our balls on curve, it'll only add them to the end. So it'll take a point in the end and a point in the end here. And at the moment we can see it starts with one ball and ends with one ball. So if I go two over here, you can now see this one end of the curve has two balls, but this one only has one over here. So if I maybe make this one like four, now this one has four and this one here has two. And how cool is that? So now we have a way of adding those on. Really, really, really powerful. So now let's play around with it. Let's just maybe increase the radius of our tube a little bit. Let's just increase the ball radius a little bit, make them bigger. And maybe let's bring the sample down. So let's maybe make it 12 balls like that. And there we have it. So really, really cool. This is so powerful now. Now that you've created this system here, the cool thing is, is you can now at any point reuse these when you want. You can save this little setup and reuse it to scatter these objects on anything you want. These are just kind of cool little nodes that'll help you do this quickly. So I hope I've explained now to you how curves work in Blender. Um, hopefully it wasn't too complicated, but you can see this is a fun little um, thing to play around with. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.